that is the time. I've never seen where pastor will come out at 4, 4 p.m. I have never seen. I have been... I, I have been to many churches before by calling, but I've never seen. But uh, this one, I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's time is the best. Uh, yes, my mind, my heart, everything. But uh, I, I was just waiting for someone somewhere to usher me. G-O-D. And, uh, and uh, without him, I can't just wash out myself here. It's not just possible. Hallelujah. I enjoy the testimony and all of that, but I want to appeal to those who are waiting. Uh, there are they have many others that are waiting for me. They want me to anchor their testimony, listen to their testimony. We have almost 10, but I just I want to. I want to appeal to them that please, Please, after the meeting here today, I will, I will find beautiful time for you. Listen to your testimony, pray with you as well. So please, let's leave it until after service. Hallelujah. That God allow me to come to your means is a great honor. Hallelujah. Thank you. Uh, yes. We need word from God to our child. Mm. You know, we need word from God to our child. So if not, we cannot do anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Are you there? Yeah. We was home. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I say I've never seen a pastor that come out 4 p.m. This is your pastor for you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your patience. Uh, yes, we have listened to a lot of testimony there and then, and uh, that is Jesus for you. Jesus desired to heal our wound. He desires to heal our what? Our wound. When I say wound, I mean everything about you. You need healing, deliverance, blessing, just name. He desires to heal your womb. That is to, 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 to free you. But often we do not permit him. Often we do not allow him. It's not something he can just come by himself without your faith. Be he, be delivered. No, it's not possible. He can't just come and say, hey, are you sick? Be he. No. He needs your attention. And the road to that, it is not easiest road. It is not easiest road. So there is anointing, just everywhere anointing. More than enough. But now it is time for you to use your faith to put anointing to put the mind on the anointing your faith now the anointing is everywhere it's so much in fact you see the way I'm working I'm just working it is that anointing that is pushing me up and down I have no control over myself that is right from the room right from the since morning been, if I have control over myself I will come out but the anointing is so much but it is time, it is for you to now use your anointing to put one, to use your faith to put one, to put the demand 
use your faith to put it in mind. The supplies is more than the mind. You know, when you are demanding for just only one person, say, ah, it's too much for me. I just, it's too much for me. That is just it. So we, we are looking for just a word for just your two to three minutes that will wash us to the, to the blessing of God today. Let's quickly take a look at the book of, I mean, look. Luke 17. They say, Jesus said to his disciple, things that cause people to be stumbled are bound to come. Can you see? It is a test you must read every second. When you get home, you just read. When you read it, it will guide you. All this uh, yeah, yeah, nonsense, uh, little irritation, overwhelming, what people say about you, what people do to you. When you know these verses, it will continue to help you. Say, Jesus said to you, you put your name where the message is personal. Jesus said to me, read along with me. One, two, three. Jesus said to me, things that will cost me to be stumbled are bound to come. Can we read it together again? No, I say anytime you read your Bible, you put message where it is personal. Put your name. Incite your name where the message is personal. In this case, now it's personal. I say, Jesus said to disciple, you remove disciple, you put your name. Jesus said to me, things that will cause me to be stumbled are bound to come. Uh -huh. If Jesus said to you, what else again? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? This means it is impossible to live this life without offense. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Can you write it down? Because I know you are a professor. You are very educated. This way is not something you can put in your memory. It must go in your heart. Write it in your paper. I know you are a professor. You are very educated. And someone who is talking to you is your, your student in the past. They say, ah, my student, Timmy Joshua is my student. I taught him when he was in primary school. Okay, well, sit down there. <laughs> Will you put your paper and write something down? When you get home now, you begin to grumbling with your, your, this, uh, your, 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 I mean, write it down. So it will help you. It will help you. And we'll read again before we proceed. We'll read again before we proceed. Let's read again together. All together, are you there? That is Luke 17, verse 1. Jesus said to me, I can't hear you. Jesus said to me, things that will cost me to stumble are bound to come. What does that mean to you? It means that it is impossible for me, Timmy Joshua, to live this life without offense. <laughs> tell your neighbor, this means, tell your neighbor, it is impossible for you to live among people without offense. Offense can come in any way. Whether you are wrong or right.
Because I saw you when you were dancing this morning. You have forgotten about your offense. That is why you are doing like this. I said, ah, see my, see my, my sister, this is my, my brother. Said, Some people will do like this. I said, ah, after I finish now, mm, I will deal with that sister. <laughs> so I I know you. I'm, 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 I, we are, I mean, I know you. Eh? I know you very well. So I was laughing. So some people do like this. Some do like this. I was saying, hey, Jesus, thank you. But after free dancing and just sit down like this, hmm, I would deal with him. <laughs> uh -huh. That is, but now we are talking now. You are forgetting about that. I want you to forget pata pata all forever. This is the, the war between you and your salvation. The war between you and God. A good Christian, a real Christian, should refuse to be offended in order not to offend God. Tell your neighbor, a real Christian, a good Christian, a true Christian should refuse to be war in order not to war. Where will you put your fence? Is that not where God lives? There's no other place in the heart. Where will you put your fence? Where Holy Spirit lives? There's no other place you can put your fence. Hey, I will put your fence somewhere here because God is somewhere. I don't want this offense to, to be, uh, I mean, to be separate. When we feel offended, we use our tongue out of bitterness, out of hatred, out of anger to crush. A close friendship to split our churches, to chatter our marriage, and to crumble family and tear them apart. And the people that mostly offend are people they cheated. It is when you are cheated, you get what? Offended! Mean the right people, the good people, Christian, they are the one. Being cheated, being embarrassed. When we feel offended, we do not know that we are trapped. <laughs> that is when you begin to see. Yes, I will deal with him. 
Okay, already have them with him. You do not know that you are what? You are trapped. Because offense is an instrument used by Satan to blind us on the reality. When you are offended, you, you see yourself concentrate and focus on the wrong done to you. I'm forgetting the condition you are in. This is an insult. I can't believe it. This is an insult. Why? Why all this? Why? Why now? Why? Whereas he has cancer, he's no longer talk about the cancer in his body. <laughs> oh, why all this? Why? What can I do? No, 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 no. I train him. I was one who trained him from school, and now he's a graduate. Now he's become rich. He, when he first came, he was living with me. I, I host him. I train him. I send him to London. Look at this black man. Eh. Whereas he has diabetes. He's no longer talking about war. He's no longer talking about war. He's talking about the wrong done to him. So I want to leave you, church, before we enter into the message, I mean, assignment today. Often it's very rampant, like the Bible said. It's common. Due to lack of real love. Due to what? There is love. There is real love. There is love. There is real love. I mean, genuine love. Due to lack of real law, real law forgets wrong. So that there is hope for the future. What is real law? Real law forgets wrong. Say, say to your neighbor. I can hear you. So that there is war, there is hope. For the future, real law forgets what? Wrong. So that there is hope for the future. Jesus loves you. To get out of your dry pit, you must let offense go. Let it go, offense. Tell your neighbor. To get out of your dry pit, you must let go what? Offense. Tell your neighbor again. I can hear you. I can't hear you. Do you know what I mean by get dry pee? Your dry pee could be sickness. Your dry pee could be isolation. Your dry pee could be, could be, could be poverty, hardship. What is your dry pee? To get out of your dry pee, you must let go of things. Whether you are wrong or right.
no one is permitted to hold on to an offense. Now, you are deceived, but don't forget that to maintain this blessing, you need God. Like my evangelist said, quote, the best man in the world can only maintain unless God protects. It is better not to achieve than to achieve and fall. Tell your neighbor, it is better not to achieve than to achieve and fall. This is the, your case. It's better not to know you as a, 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 a blessed man than to know you as a blessed man and becoming It's better not to achieve than to achieve and fall. You desire healing, you desire blessing. Yes, it's good. He who desire victory must be ready for war. You desire blessing, you desire victory. You desire protection, salvation, all of God's blessing. He who desires victory must be ready for war. For war. I want to leave you here. Take it once again. The best man in the world can only maintain unless God protests. Rise up, thank you. Ask your neighbor, what will you do with this little cancer? What will you do with the cancer? Tell your neighbor, ask your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, ask your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, ask your neighbor. Will you ask your neighbor a question, a simple question? I can hear you. I can hear you. Uh -huh. That is it. That is to maintain you need God. It's better not to achieve than to achieve and fall. What will you do with cancer? You have heard that go Christian should refuse to be war, to be offended. Good Christian should war to be offended. How? Because you don't want to offend God. The reason why you have to refuse to be offended because you don't want to offend God. You can't hold offense and talk to God. And you cannot hold offense and hear from God. It's not possible. Because when you hold offense, your spirit is not free. And the, your spirit needs to be free to contact the spirit of God. 
when you hold an offense, an offense, your spirit is in bondage. And your spirit needs to be free to be sensitive to the spirit of God. Like uh, just little sample I gave you that when you hold an offense, you see yourself focus and concentrate on the wrong done to you, forgetting the condition in which you are. It's not possible to talk about two things. You can't be talking about failure and at the same time talking about success. Once you focus on, look at, I'm talking to you now. I cannot also turn back and they say another thing, it's not possible. Once you are focusing and concentrating on the wrong done to you, the condition in which you are is silent. Glory be to God. I can hear you. It's better not to receive than to receive and lose. I lose it. So with all your heart, you have to receive. When you talk with all your heart, the job is half done. When we start praying now, and you begin to confess with all your heart, the job is half done. You have scored 50%. Are you with me? Yeah. I want to repeat again. When we say, okay, it is time to, to, to pray, and you begin to talk with all your heart, at that level, you have scored 50%. The job is half done. But how will you talk with all your heart? When your heart is not free, when you, you, you find yourself in hostage, in self-imprisonment, because of unforgivable spirit, You are carrying anger, carry hatred, carry bitterness against someone. You are here in the presence of God. Carry unforgivable spirit, carry hatred, bitterness, jealousy against someone, someone, somewhere. And you want to receive from God. Already God has already judged those who has offended you. It's in the dark book when you read it down. Woe unto. Can you can you take it take your book and read? It's a, it has judged already. So if God has laid judgment on those who have offended you, why you want to also? It's there.
He said, but woe unto anyone through whom they come. <laughs> Read this. He said, he said, thing that cause people to stumble are bound to come. But woe unto anyone through whom they what? They come. What of it? What judgment again? It's clear. And below, the, the, the punishment has been described there already. It's there. When you read it down. Are you free? Are you free now? Now, before now, we are carrying anger, bitterness, hurt, deep pain, deep hurt against someone. Make sure you are free now so that we can proceed. Because we are about to enter another level. You know, when pilot is flying, they will tell you they are going up, up above the level they are. We are going up, up, up now. You, whatever you need to do, that place, get yourself free. You need to be free. It makes the job easier. To be free is 50 percent. You can open your lips and say, Lord Jesus, Come into my heart. Wash me with your precious blood. It's prayer. Be was all over the world. We need to be free to contact the Spirit of God. If your spirit is not free, you cannot contact the Spirit of God. Right now, say a simple prayer. Just too simple. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Wash me with your precious blood. Save my soul today. Prayer, viewers. I need to say listen because I have not talked to you. Listen, listen, listen to this is message to you. As a good Christian, you should refuse to be offended in order not to offend Jesus. This is true. Jesus said to you that it is not possible to leave this world without offense. But in order to, not to offend God, you should refuse to be offended. So please open your lips right now and say this way. Lord Jesus, you know, I'm not calling you a sinner. I say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. 
heart. Watch me with your precious blood. Save my soul today. Prayer, prayer. Jésus vient dans mon cœur, lave-moi par ton sang précieux, sauve mon âme aujourd'hui. Prie. Prie, Seigneur, viens dans mon cœur, lave-moi par ton sang précieux, salve mon âme, oremos. Listen to me. When we feel offended, we begin to use our tongue out of bitterness and anger. You know, out of bitterness and anger, we begin to use our tongue to split relationship, chatter marriage and tear family apart. Split the ministry churches with our tongue in the tongue, dead and life. As the book of Proverbs 18, 21 said, right now, say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Wash me with your precious blood. Save my soul. Save my soul today. Prayer. Le Seigneur élève la voix. Dit Seigneur Jésus, viens dans mon cœur. La voix pour ton sang précieux et sauve mon âme. Élève la voix et priez.
Christ's name we pray. Like I, I, I asked you, what is your dry pit? When Joseph was in the dry pit, he said to himself, this is not where I belong. He was in the dry pit where there's no light, there's nothing. He was there. He said to himself, going by his dream and his goal, he has dreamt, dreamt, dreamt. You know what? The vision is all about for him. He said to himself, this is not where I belong. I know where I belong. Because of this statement, that comfort him. That statement comforting him. You are supposed to be comforted if you have vision. When we say a man, a poor man, does not mean a man without money in the pocket, but a man without vision. Whatever situation you are in, whatever situation you are in, remember your dream and your goal. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. This Joseph was in the dry pit. He said to himself, after remembering his dream and goal, he said to himself, this is not where I belong. I know where I belong. He laughed. He said, ah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. This is one of the things I will pass through to get to where I'm going. Have you ever said to yourself before, I said, standing in the, in the face of storm and crisis, you stand to say, hey, this is not where I belong. My dream does not suggest this. This is not where I belong. I know where I belong. <laughs> okay, it's, it's just a stopover. It's one of the stage I must pass through. Mean it will not for me, it will not impair me, but improve me. My struggle, your struggle will make you stronger. Ask yourself this when you but you never remember you I mean if you have vision and you dream you remember instead of lamenting mumbling complaining ah, oh my god why this trouble why this shit oh my god why this God why all this trouble no our situation Remembering us, our dream and our goal. Remember your goal and your dream, whatever situation. Joseph was in the dry pit, and immediately that situation reminding him his dream and goal. He said to himself, uh -uh, I dream seeing crown. I dream wearing crown. I dream seeing myself in the throne. This is not throne. This is not where I belong. I know where I belong. I know where I belong mean, yes, I'm still going there. I know where I belong mean, here will make me stronger. I know where I belong mean, this place will not impair me, but improve me. Do you ever talk to yourself like that? Each time you have no money, you begin to complain. Each time there is challenge, you begin to complain. You allow your situation to, 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 to rule you. You allow your situation to dictate your direction. You allow your situation. Don't allow your situation to rule you. Take 
tell your neighbor, I know where I belong. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. If you know where you where you belong, why complaining? Why murmuring? Why lamenting over situation you are in? Why? Ask yourself. If you know where you belong, that alone can give you joy, strength. A strength, so much strength to overlook the situation. I say to you, desire victory must be ready for war. So, it's part of your war you must fight. Are you with, are you with me? Cancer can be part of the war. Fever, setback, hardship, poverty, disappointment can be one of the war you must fight to get to the throne. Tell your neighbor, he who desire victory must be ready for war. When we say war, you may fight 20 war to get to the throne. And each war you must overcome. If not, it will give you, I mean, I mean, said by. You, you, you may fight 20 war. The number of war you will fight may not be number of war you will fight. You may fight 20, you may fight 100. The nature of war you will fight may not be the nature of war you will fight. Your can be disappointment. Your can be hardship. Your can be even they will lie against you, you go into prison and come back. Could be isolation, could be sickness, this is affliction, could be that war you need to fight to get to the throne. He who desire victory, he who desire crown, who he who desire to be in palace must be ready to fight war. Ask your neighbor, what is your present war now? If you answer you, you answer her. Okay, what is your present war? Answer your neighbor. What is your present war now? Your could be disappointment, could be said by, could be said by hardship, hatred. What is your present war? Nothing come for nothing and nothing happen by chance. So Joseph found himself in the dry pit as a part of war. He must fought, and he fought it, and overcame, and he moved forward. From that dry pit, that pit was not the last war. He still went ahead to to do all, to fight. You can't from dry pit to another way. Dry pain was not the last war Joseph fought to get to the throne. Are you saying dry pain was the last war? No. Okay, why are you clamor? Why are you trouble? Why are you crying? <laughs> dry pain was not. That was why he said, I know where I belong. 
this is not where I belong. I know where I belong. He knew he would still fight. He has more battle to fight. But each war, each battle, he remember his goal, his vision. Tell your neighbor, remember your vision. I can't hear you. Nothing is much more than your vision. Nothing is much more than your goal. I can hear you. I can hear you. Nothing is much more than your vision and your goal. Yes. It is better not to achieve than to achieve and fall. Thank you. You may be seated. Now, I can anybody that listen to this message still complaining over the situation now. Eh? When you know where you belong, you will soon leave that situation. Situation will soon leave you. Yeah. That is it. Yeah. You will leave the situation and the situation will leave you. You know where you belong. That is not where you belong. Slow down. You meet another situation after this. You will meet another situation probably greater than the one you are facing now. The the the, 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 the crown, the type of crown you are you are you are you are prepared for. Greater crown attracts greater persecution. So that is it. You you are talking as if this is the last war you will fight to get to the palace. This is the way you talk now. As if you are you are get you are, you are fed up. This is the last battle. I do know that is the last battle you will fight to get to the palace, to get to your destination. This is the way you talk. You talk as if you are tired. You talk as if you are fed up. So many of us, we don't know what it means to say uh, Joseph was in the dry pit. That pit was not the last battle. He left the dry pit and then soldier on to another battle, another greater situation. So we that are, 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 we that maintain the relationship with God are enabled. Anybody that maintain a relationship, if you say today I want to be a friend of God, I want to be with God, you will be enabled to endure. That that is a grace in maintaining the relationship. If you just genuinely, not just people that confess uh, Jesus is my Lord, Jesus is my Lord, if genuinely you confess him and you follow him, there is a package for you. No one's follow Jesus without enablement. There is enablement that will, eh, 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 that will endure you to overcome the confront, the, the test and, 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 and hardship that confronting your daily life. There is enablement. Enablement means strength, ability. He doesn't leave us just like that. He has given each everyone enablement. Why should we complain? When you are following him, he gives you enablement. For those who follow him, you can't just follow him without enablement. That enablement is to enjoy you, give you endurance, and what? Overcoming. So when you see people complaining, 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 me is not genuinely born again. If you are genuinely born again, there is 
enablement. There is enablement given to you that is ability, strength given to you to, to, to be his children, to be his child. And that enablement will give you endurance. In that enablement, it will give you power to overcome. So, it was that enablement that given Joseph endurance to endure the situation in the dry pit. Ah, if not, he would have died there. To endure the situation in the dry pit. That is why he, the young man said to himself, this is not where I belong. Okay, look at the gentleman that just testified, the last brother, husband and wife. He said after the deliverance, he, he, he had a dream. He said it. Uh, and a woman came to, her, to him. And you listen to what she said. The woman told the wife, say, after the deliverance, he had a dream. That is enablement. They should just have to grab that. Hey, what I could not do before. Now I'm now doing it. It means there is certain strength from above that came. You are living and talking as if you, the life you live is yours. Once you are born again, the life you are living is not yours, but Christ. Me, when you are born again, you follow Christ. It means someone is somewhere seeing you through. It means someone is somewhere fighting for you. It means someone is somewhere protecting you. You may not see, but it's somewhere, somewhere, see you. Amen. So can you be bold enough to say, I know where I belong? You know the meaning? The meaning means the situation you are in now, it's not, for, it's not yours. You will soon get out of that Amen. and move forward. Amen. Say to yourself, I know where I belong. Where do you belong? That is the question. So, please. You need to talk to yourself. When you talk to yourself, it's better than even pastor talk to you. You don't used to talk to yourself. So I'm talking to you, but if you really talk to yourself with all your heart, it's more powerful than pastor talk to you. You need to talk to yourself. So that is, when you get home today, you need to meditate over and over and over the message you received today. So, Madam, can I talk to you?